I want to open up how the discipline of study, as taught by Curcio, has changed my heart and mind and drawn me closer to the beloved community to which Christ calls us all. For years, at every reunion group I took part in, I answered the question, what have I studied that's increased my understanding of my relationship with God and His creation? Through study of a particular kind, I've been on what is so far a two-decade-long project to rewire my thinking, an intentional program of reading that's opened my eyes to seeing the world through the experiences of people who are very different from me, and that's deepened my empathy. And I've spoken elsewhere about how I was raised not merely with implicit bias, but with an explicit racism. I was born in Montgomery, Alabama in 1963, a deeply divided city at a particular time. This was the context in which I came to learn about race without even knowing I was being taught. I learned to use the word colored, never heard my parents uh, say a racial epithet in our home, yet my dad brought and regularly played for us rebel records. They were the sort of things one would find at a Klan rally and other white supremacist gatherings. These intentionally racist messages were a part of my childhood. Now, in time, I came to see the theological truth that every human is a child of God and that our differences are a gift and no one is cursed. But by the time I considered and rejected the underlying premise that different ethnicities make some people inherently better than others, I had a lot of words, phrases, jokes, songs implanted in my mind. The seeds were planted deep, and they've proven difficult to root out. I live and to study through reading. Other than last year in pandemic, I've averaged reading a book a week for years. I, I make sure that more than half the books I read are by persons of color, women, LGBT writers, and persons living in very different cultures. That steady diet of seeing the world through the eyes of writers like theologian Kelly Brown Douglas or the searing words of ta Coates or the hopeful love is the way by our presiding Bishop Michael Curry have given me new ears through which to hear scripture, new eyes to see injustice all around me. I live in a majority-minority neighborhood in the majority-minority city of Savannah. I was ordained and consecrated Bishop of Georgia here in Christ Church, the Mother Church of Georgia, a church paid for at least in part by the money made from the selling of enslaved persons and mostly from exporting the cotton they were enslaved to plant, tend, and pick. The seal of the diocese on my ring was the personal seal of our first bishop, whose wealth came from generations of enslaved workers. The stained glass window behind me is dedicated to his honor in this church where he preached an explicitly race-based way of understanding God's creation. We have a constant reminder in our midst of how painfully wrong people of goodwill can be when they benefit from getting the gospel wrong. Yet we also have examples of getting it right. The actual ring I wear was worn by Bishop Albert Rhett Stewart as he championed integration in the 1950s and 60s and received death threats for it. He was joined in that work of integration by our diocesan chancellor, Malcolm McLean, who was nourished by word and sacrament in this church, a parishioner here. As mayor, Malcolm McLean worked with black leaders to bring about the desegregation of Savannah before the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Embedded within the Curcio method is this powerful way God can further transform each of our hearts and minds. For reading books alone, well, that changed nothing for me key to see the world through the experience of others was that it was used by the Holy Spirit in the midst of a life of piety and action. Piety or prayer, study, action, they nourish one another. The truth, the deep truth I would rather hide is that those words and images planted in my heart in my early years have proven difficult to root out. I live in hope that I can exercise these race-based messages, this way of seeing the world completely, but I, I can't and don't claim to have arrived. I've just seen how the path of prayer and study put into action is transformative. God is not near finished with me yet or with you. How might the Holy Spirit want to use this discipline of study in your life? How might God use study to enlarge your empathy for others?